So back for the third video of the day, and this one is solely around the jets and the helicopter that's been announced uh, to be released today. So the first aircraft is the Avro Vulcan B2, representing an aircraft from the Waddington Wing in 1975. Uh, an unusual camo scheme, and it's the fourth 172 Vulcan that's been released. Um, really nice looking aircraft. Um, but quite a price hike. This is looking to retail at £199.99. So it'll be interesting to see what sort of sales that will come with that. Up next is another stalwart of the RAF, and that's a Eurofighter Typhoon FTR GR4, uh, currently of an aircraft based with RAF number 9 squadron at Lossiemouth. Uh, quite a plain looking aircraft, but it'll be interesting to see how this sells when it comes up against the new retooled um, Hobby Master version, which looks quite good in comparison to this. This may well um, be the last of the Typhoons we see for a little while. Unsurprisingly, the next aircraft up is the Gold Stars Retirement Scheme RAF Tornado uh, to go with the previous pair which will be released relatively soon of the Bat and the um, Green and Grey Camo. Um, quite surprised it's in the standard range. I thought it might have been one of the aircraft they lure you in to join the new relaunched Corgi Collectors Club, but clearly not. This is bound to sell out very, very quick um, and you know will, will make a fantastic looking trio on your display shelves. The final aircraft of the 2020 catalogue is this Corgi Jaguar. Um, bit of a strange one, it's no particular squadron, but it's representing an aircraft as part of the motorway trials in 1975. The final release uh, currently of the Corgi 2020 uh, catalogue is the second of the RAF 100 Chinooks. Uh, the first one was a pretty good attempt but wasn't quite right around the rear of the Chinook, so hopefully there will be no such similar mistakes with this. Quite a garish looking aircraft, uh, but the Chinooks usually come up really, really nice. Um, and, you know, any serious helicopter fans out there, this will be a must for them. So, um... A very, very mixed bag in terms of the responses to this catalogue. Um, for me, personally, I'm a World War II piston uh, propeller guy. So, for me, it's ticked a lot of the boxes. Um, I'm really, really disappointed that there's no Battle of Britain special set. So, last year, I think the highlight for 2019 was the D-Day collection. So, that's all brother, the P-47, obviously the bow fighter, which technically falls into that. The ME109, the Typhoon, you know, they're fantastic models. And of course, obviously, the Spitfire 14 as well. And all of them sold really, really well. The box art just looked the part. Um, I would have thought they would have done something very similar this year with the Spit Hurricane, ME109, Stuka, you know, the real stalwarts of the Battle of Britain. Uh, but they haven't, which is really, really quite surprising. Unless something's up their sleeves for the summer, for a big summer reveal. But then again, they're missing that, that key moment to launch it very similar to the tornado so the tornadoes almost felt like an afterthought last year when obviously the, the tornado retired in april and all the big fly pass that were going on in march you would have thought that potentially you know someone like duxford had nearly ten thousand people attend just to see the tornado fly over if they'd had that on sale there it could have made an absolute killing i think in terms of the other stuff you know the Lancaster will sell really well, despite the £20 price hike on it. Um, any Battle of Britain Memorial flight collectors will be all over that. Um, disappointed there's no Hamden. Uh, I, I sort of guessed there wouldn't be because they're fixing it to retool that. Um, but curiously, tonight, uh, tonight they've just announced they uh, are releasing a retooled Beaufort. So maybe that's one potentially for the future. Um, but I really think you know, there's so much potential in the Hamden. Um, it's a great looking aircraft, a bit of a mainstay of the Bomber Command fleet before the big boys turned up. Um, I think there's so much potential with it, you know, especially with Coastal Command schemes, Victoria Cross schemes. It's a really good opportunity to go after something a little bit different, uh, something that's not really been seen on the market for a long while. Um, really quite impressed that Corgi are going after me, Amigo, uh, the B-17s. So all the B-17s generally sell fantastically well. I think it's a great tie-in with everything that happened last summer with, obviously, the, uh, Tony Folds in, in Sheffield, who'd been looking after the memorial since he was a little boy. Um, be lovely to see Corgi presenting with uh, 
an actual model. I think that'd be a great uh, bit of PR, bit of positive PR as well. Um, I think it's a lo- it would be a lovely gesture um, after all you've done, obviously, for the Fallen crew for it. Um, I think in terms of the prices, um, obviously the small fighters have stayed at 50 quid. Um, a lot of noise around the Vulcan going up to 200 quid considering its plastic content. It does look a very nice scheme, admittedly, but um, I think it could be a tough sell at 200 quid. Um, the price of the hobby is going up and up, and you've got to appreciate that with Brexit and import duties and God knows what else. Uh, but I think that's going to be a very, very tough one to uh, shift at that price. Um, to just sort of add a bit of context to it, or I can get where there's a lot of anger um, because it feels like a very, very safe catalogue. The stuff that's been chosen is is good to sell um, and I think will sell through quite well. If you look at last year's 2019 output, they sold fantastically. D-Day, they probably could have sold a few more units, but again, played it relatively safe. You've got to remember, Colgy, a part of the Hornby group, who are trying to have an amazing turnaround of fortunes, and Lyndon Davis, to his credit, has done a fantastic job there to stabilise it. Um, but they're not going to go on the attack just yet. They're not turned that corner entirely. I think once they start seeing positive return, you might see a bigger scale catalogue and more adventure and more more new tallings. You've got to remember, new tallings very rarely break even on the first release you've got to have a sustained sort of amount of models to go after it so that's why i'm a little bit surprised that none of the new toolings have been utilized in terms of the me 109 the p51 and bow fighter i sort of get the 148 phantom hasn't been utilized purely because you know maybe there's a few teething issues there but the others i think there's opportunities there for battle of britain bow fighter for example lots more different p51s there's so many we can you know you can pick um, so I guess they will come but once the business sort of turns a corner so that's it from my Cool Geek Catalogue 2020 review um, thanks for all the feedback and whatnot on the um, Instagram and on Facebook it's absolutely come alive over the last few days um, I do really get your frustrations but also see the positives in it as well um, be interesting to see if there's any mid-year updates uh, or stuff sort of coming out as, as and when or whether there's stuff that just wasn't ready to launch Um, But what we can hope is that this stuff sells and that Hornby as a business turns around financially this year and starts turning a profit because I think the more profitable they become, the more risk they'll be willing to take in terms of new tooling. And now thanks for all the love and support as always on Instagram and Facebook and I'll speak to you soon.